Nice. Welcome to JSA TV, the newsroom for data center and telecom professionals. I'm Barb Mitchell joining you today from the floor of Data Cloud Global Congress here in beautiful Monaco. Uh, and joining me is Lenek Andreo, a general manager, power systems for EMEA, India, and Australia for Kohler. Thanks for having me, Barbara. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And it's great to see you here uh, in, in Monaco. And I know that, you know, you're focused on, as, as all of Kohler and all of your team is focused a lot around sustainability. So I think we're going to start our conversation there today. True. Well, so be, 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 uh, beyond being a power business, you know, Kohler is also a kitchen and bath player, right? Yeah. Quite a lot. So involved in water, uh, in water projects around the world for cleaner water, easier access to water specifically for uh, children and, and girls, right? Yeah. Because there's a, there's a direct correlation between uh, these types of projects and educations and, uh, and the, the well-being of the society. So parking that part a little bit, you know, I, I'm more the generator guys. You know, I, I is a... The the the, uh, the part of the company providing backup to the data center power industry, and you know traditionally we've called ourselves diesel generator manufacturers, right? And yeah. uh, we've had the opportunity a bit more recently uh, to test uh, different uh, types of fuel that we can put in our generators. So we don't have our to call ourselves diesel anymore, right? right. And and I know yeah. you're gonna in that point a bit uh, a bit later but uh, there are today's opportunities that are developing in terms of biofuel in terms of synthetic fuel that are going to make existing products much cleaner you know mm -hmm. and much better at capturing the carbon for our industry yeah yeah and i i love that kohler as a whole as as i said and 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 you've said as well the your entire company globally is is focused on these things in whichever way you can be you know big and small and what we're talking about today is colder power and colder power for data centers mm -hmm. and you know i'd love to hear about some of the innovations that you've been working on as a team such as hvo etc sure let, let let's talk about let's talk about hvo and just another word about color it's our 150 years anniversary Yes, this right. year. So yes, it's, happy it's, anniversary. It's That's very right. it's very cool, and you yeah. know, and there's an element in a family business that you want to leave the business better for the next generation. Right. Yeah. So it's the same for our industry, right? You want yeah. to 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 get this industry cleaner for the next generation. So HVO helps us do that. You know, how does it help us do that? Of course, it's a fuel that is created from you know uh, green stuff that you recoup in a really short circuit in Europe, and it's refined in Europe and it's a fuel that has the advantage of keeping itself much longer than diesel. You don't have to clean it as much than diesel. And you can capture up to 90% carbon you know, as you use uh, this fuel in our generators without any noticeable impact on performance or durability of the equipment. Yeah. Uh, beyond supplying this to a select number of our customers and the industry in general, We've also decided to move all our factory to this fuel. You know, why not do the right thing? It's a bit, right. it's a bit more expensive than, uh, yeah. it's a bit more expensive than diesel today or GNR. It's uh, 1.4, 1.5 times. It's a bit more difficult to find, but it's always the same. It's always a balance between supply and demand. As the, uh, as the demand grows, then the, the, uh, the oil and gas companies and the people in, in, in involved in that fuel business will actually uh, produce more. Uh, but we took the opportunity, right? Why not do the right thing? Why not uh, you know, impact our region, you know, uh, west of France, uh, immediately with the ripe carbon capture impact? And uh, right. we're very excited we have done that. We're very excited that some of uh, the industries uh, has also followed us and opted that in their data centers. Right. Uh, you've got a number of our customers today that run the data centers on that HVO fuel only. Yeah. And you're leading by example, which is, is great. As uh, to your point, some people ask me the question, you know, how, how will we do this? It's, you know, more difficult for this reason or that reason. Um, but you're, you're finding the way. It, look, it's, it's, it's a good investment, right? It's right. a good investment for the future. It's a good investment for the industry. It's, uh, it sets us apart. It, it helps the industry with, uh, of course, the energy is a big topic, you know, beyond that, a center in Europe, you know, we, uh, We've had a big topic on potential power cut. You know, yeah. we have, of course, a geopolitical climate that uh, puts a lot of stress on the energy networks everywhere. So, uh, being able to play a little part, and as you say, do the right thing, and uh, yeah. and uh, 
adopt a fuel that is uh, that is much more amicable for our uh, populations around our you know, right. the, the countries where we deployed was uh, just the right thing to do. Yeah, and so you've hinted, uh, you know, a couple of times I've heard you say, uh, you know, supply chain and and the supply of of energy and, and various. But when you specifically with HVO, you know, when you think about supply chain and differences potentially between Europe and North America. Yeah. It's probably much more a European play at the moment, right? right. So the uh, mainly it is distributed by the traditional oil and gas companies providers, right? right. Uh, uh, they've been more uh, probably proactive at investing in that in Europe. Uh, in France, we're in Monaco. You know, France is very nearby. You know, in France, it is not a problem to find it. Uh, to do all our tests, for example, for all our generators in our factory. We test tens of thousands of generators every year. It was not a problem for us to yep. acquire the right uh, quantities of fuel to do that. You know, Would you be able to change all the buses of France to that fuel today? Right. Probably not, right? So that, that was my point about ad adapting uh, uh, the supply to demand. I think it's going to be uh, something that progresses over time uh, as people realize the benefits you know, and as people... I keep on investing in one of the big benefits of that fuel is it work, it works with, with existing technology. Right. So yeah. you don't have to, you know, change your diesel engines or go buy new technology. And each time you create a new product, there's a carbon footprint associated with that, you know, right. creation. So mm -hmm. it's a bit of recycling of a technology that is widely deployed through the market while it's limiting drastically its carbon impact. So we're pretty confident in it. We also think it's, you know, it's just one fuel. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not a fuel expert. What What's next? I don't know. But yeah. I can tell you we're testing many, many other fuels, uh, synthetics ones, biofuels of other nature that will for sure compete HVO, but will bring uh, bring all the solutions to the forefront in the future. Yeah. I, yeah. And I'm glad you said that because that was going to be, you know, my next question was just around what next? What are you seeing other than HVO for, for you know, backup power, et cetera? What are you seeing in the short term and then longer term for our industry? Well, we're, we're not excluding anything, right? Yeah. You know, ba battery storage has carved out space for himself uh, in certain type of applications. Hydrogen is a big question around the world. You know, whether you put it in an engine or you put it in a fuel cells, uh, you know, wind and solars are also a viable source of energy. So we're you know, at color, we're not excluding anything. We're we're uh, we're uh, betting and studying and uh, trying to engineer all of these uh, these projects to learn. Uh, I think it's going to be horses for courses, right? I think <laughs> we're gonna yeah. we're gonna try to. Uh, I think the world has interest, the economy, the industry has interest to try to understand what best technology to use for what type of application, right? right? And yeah, that makes all sense. of the fuels and all of the technologies that are mentioned have extremely viable applications and will have in the future. The mix is going to be the big question. Right. Yeah, I understand. Well, for those of our viewers, I know we only have a couple days left of this show, so hopefully you'll... I think that um, you'll be busy over the next couple of days. It goes sure without saying. Yeah. <laughs> so for those uh, folks who maybe don't get a chance to connect with you here at the show, how can they connect with you or your team at Kohler? Well, it's very easy. We have a right in the middle of the exhibition right there up the stairs, you know, up pointing this way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you'll, you'll find us. We have a little stand uh, with uh, with the color name on it. And uh and of course, you can collect to our uh, to our website and find all the contacts you need. But uh, yeah, we'd love to talk to you about energy. That's what we do. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lenin. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us. Really appreciated uh, speaking with you. I always, you know, love love hearing some of the innovations coming out of Kohler and and your your role in that uh, is is interesting to hear about as well. So thank you. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV, coming to you live today from the floor of Data Cloud Global Congress. All the best until next time.